Alright guys, um, I thought I would cover really briefly the uh, GFA gross uh, floor area massing sort of calculator that I showed uh, in lecture um, earlier this week um, and just kind of explain it again. And you can kind of look at this overall, right? Uh, some of the annotations uh, start to help uh, give you a sense. But basically we're inputting B-reps, we're getting kind of overall dimensions using the bounding box, and then using the box corners uh, component essentially to get the height, right? Overall height of the massing that you have. Um, we're doing a little math here to be able to set a specific floor to floor height. And then using the math to figure out, well, how many floors out of that overall height would you get, right? And then feeding that into the uh, contour to be able to calculate the floor uh, areas, all right? So uh, just step by step, um, these are the example file that I gave you. So there's kind of like a little bit of variety, right, in the floor plates as well as like a sort of void atrium, right? So just kind of test that it works in uh, several different scenarios, all right? Uh, under uh, params, geometry, uh, BREP, okay, so we're popping this in, and we can do it one by one first, right, so I'll use that tower at least as an example first uh, to kind of debug or test uh, the definition, right, and um, double clicking to search for uh, essentially the bounding box component, and this essentially creates that bounding box, right? Then we want to use the bounding box corner, uh, essentially, oh sorry, box corner. Uh, here, box corners, extract all eight corners of a box, right? And uh, this box essentially uh, can feed in to here. Right? These are all sort of box gives us all the four, sorry, all eight corners, right? And A, B, C, D, E, uh, I've mentioned before that if you're kind of wondering about which one's A, which one is B, just plop in a point component. And the one that you highlight, that one is A, right? The next one over here, and we can look, that one's B. Okay, so if I'm just sort of looking at this model, then I know that A, A, B, you know, C, D is going that way, so this is sort of, you know, counterclockwise, and then E should be that one up here, all right, so we can test that, right, so E is this one, so E, F, G, H, all right. So, um, given that we know that A, uh, essentially what I need from this sort of uh, bounding box component is actually to figure out the height, right, the overall height of the bounding box, right, so we can simply sort of draw a line connecting these two points, um, so line, between two points, right, A to A, uh, this E to B, okay, I'll delete this, and just to kind of check, right, so that green line is this sort of vertical line, okay, and then let's measure the length uh, of the curve or the line, right, so we get a number, right, and this number essentially becomes the, uh, right now, the height, right, of your massing, this is, uh, let's say, 118 feet or so, okay, so that's the uh, what this is kind of doing, this part of the code, right? Now we do need to look at our options, particularly for uh, for contour. I know, and I mentioned that there's the two kind of contour options for uh, B reps, and uh, these two versions differ, right? Uh, this one actually, so S P N D, the N. This is the contour normal direction, just gives it a Z, right? That's a direction. The O here actually uses offsets as a list, which is kind of interesting because this uh, version, the contour EX, uh, actually allows us to pass it a list of uh, essentially these are the different heights where our floor plates are, okay? Now you can actually do this uh, manually. I'm going to, going to delete that. You can actually do that manually uh, using a list. You know, for example, if I just pull in a... Um, so uh, a, pan, uh, a panel, right, and say 0, let's say 10, 25, 30, uh, 35, for example, right, just as a, as a sort of test. And uh, this we can put into here, and this you'll get an error because this is, a not, this is sort of text, right, so right-click on it, make it multi-line data, right. 
uh, that turns in actually sort of uh, the data type that it's expecting. Okay, here uh, B rep or mesh to contour, right? This actually just directly comes from our input B rep way over here. Okay, so this goes to there, right? Just so you can kind of see, and you can see essentially what it's already doing, right? Is that this is zero, ten. Uh, 25 and 35, right? So it's great about this is actually you can kind of just like you know specify and put in uh, the next floor is also 45, 55, but maybe the next floor gets bigger, so that's actually 70, right? And essentially, it's actually able to you're able to construct your own sort of variable uh, floor, essentially, right? Um, okay, so now let's. Uh, Oh, that was a zero. I had a blank number right there. That's why it turned red. Um, okay, so knowing that this is the advantage of this sort of particular contour component, right? Um, let's kind of finish it out. This is actually assuming the world XY base plane as the sort of uh, uh, offset plane, right? It's using that base XY plane to offset upwards here, okay? However, uh, let's just make sure that it's pinned to one of these corners, uh, let's say the A corner, right? So we'll actually put in a, an XY plane, so over here, okay? These are also at uh, here uh, under vectors plane, right? And all the sort of different planes are here, XY, okay? This is the XY plane, but you can give it an origin point, which is basically linked or tied to that um, point A of our bounding box, regardless of where, what height, you know, the bounding box is. All right, last thing here is the distances uh, between contours, right? If omitted, you must, actually, let me move it this way so you can see it on the screen. If omitted, you, may, you must specify offset instead, right? So, like, if we put it a distance here, that means it will always use that same distance, but we want to actually have this flexibility, so that's why we're actually not putting anything um, in that slot, okay? Some of these components like behave differently depending on what inputs uh, you give them, all right? Now here, uh, what I actually kind of want to do is to make a slider, uh, zero smaller than, let's say, uh, 20, for example, right? This is the inter -sli integer slider, right, which actually represents floor to floor heights, right? And I just want to set, let's say, a standard floor to floor height, at least for now, of 10, okay? And I know I have this number, right, which is the um, overall height, and I can actually uh, name this overall height, for example. And just to kind of declutter this, uh, I will unclick draw paths, unclick draw indices, right? So this is a more of a clean text box. So that's like the overall height of the massing, right? Now I know that I can take this overall height divided by 10. That gives me roughly, you know, 11.8 floors, right? Almost 12 floors, essentially, right? We can kind of do that math, right? And that basically would uh, sort of feed into like how many of these levels, you know, I want to put into this sort of offset as, as a list, right? So instead of actually putting this in manually, let's see if we can set this relationship up so this math is sort of done um, automatically for us, right? So to begin with, we need a, a uh, division component, right? We're taking our overall height and dividing it by our floor to floor height. Now this you'll see inherits the tag of the input, but the same thing I can go into here and say, just sort of you know, label more ex explicitly, right, what this slider does, right? It kind of helps clarity, right? That's our floor to floor height uh, sort of variable, okay? Now, what you'll get out here is probably something like a 11.883704, right? It's not you know, it's not an integer number, right? And it's not helpful for us in terms of determining how many floors really wa we want. So we need to essentially round this number, right? So we round it out. So out here on the input integer nearest to x would be 12, right? It's you can, it's rounding up or down, or if you want to go smaller, then you can use the f value. Kind of depends on which one you want, right? Um, smaller than or equal, right? Um, next thing uh, is we will use actually a series of numbers, right, to basically uh, create a list, right? And going back to this, by default, it already has a series of numbers going from 0 to 9, 
like 10 values right here. That's why by default these uh, 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 this component uh, input has already you know has zero um, as its default. Sometimes I just like to actually put in a explicit value just to make things you know uh, more easy to read. Um, as a document instead of having to hover over everything, okay? Um, step size is set to 1. So the step size is actually this, right? This is our floor-to-floor -floor height. This is what we're controlling. This is how much, right, each floor should have in between, right? And then from here, because we have already, you know, how many floors this thing should have overall, um, in this case, right, because this is getting kind of maybe really close, if we put it here, you'll see zero right is the sort of ground floor 110 is the last floor your top floor might be 8.8 .8 or something slightly smaller right so that's where you might decide i want to do the f value because then you lose a floor then it means your top floor is maybe 18 instead of you know eight right so that kind of depends on whether you're rounding up or down or you know always right um then this essentially goes to here and you start to see the floors in there, right? So you'll see the difference that top floor is a little shorter. If I use the F value, then that top floor becomes more of like a top, like atrium floor, for example, right? Or a top, you know, a generous, like, you know, top roof level, okay? So uh, I'll keep these just here, uh, just so we can see them, right? Uh, we have all our sort of contour, you know, outlines in here. And I can kind of hide the volume right just so you can maybe see it a little bit better but um, the next thing I want to do is actually to basically use those contours to create surfaces so this is a boundary surface component okay and um, I'll start hiding well so I'm going to hide this control control Q control Q to hide these so they're a little less uh, distracting even than contours right right now I'm just left with these like um, surfaces that you're seeing okay so these surfaces and actually let me hide that b rip as well right these are the actual floor plates that we're getting okay very simply we run an area calculation on it so area right where we'll get essentially if i pull down a panel again i will get this right which uh, right now uh, is sort of sorted into, uh, let's say, their own sublists, right? List uh, within the list, like in terms of data structure. And um, in this case, right, uh, we want to take all these areas and add them all together, right? So this is individual floor area, okay, of floor areas for each individual floor, 4,000-ish square feet, right? Uh, we want to add this all together, so mass addition. So mass, right, M-A. This goes into here. Now, another panel right here, okay? Now, what you'll notice is that these two are pretty much identical, right? So what the mass addition is doing, because our data structure is such that each list has only one item, right? So it's only just say, oh, well, you want to give me one thing, there's nothing to add to, so I'm just giving you back those values back, right? So what we'd have to do is actually collapse this list, essentially flatten it, right? Make, make it one uh, big list. You can do it here, you can do it here. Um, I'll do it here just so you can see what happens. So as soon as I flatten it, it makes this into an entire list, right? So it's all over here, right? All the sort of, like, say, uh, 10, 11 floors, right, are one in, in one list now instead of 11 individual lists by themselves. And this becomes the actual aggregate of all these numbers, okay? Now, I tend to put this here instead of at the output. Um, it's kind of up to you, but I tend to put it at the output, so I'll unclick this. But you essentially, you right-click at the input, and you can use this sort of flatten modifier. So once it comes in, then you'll see this is as the overall floor area, right? Or overall area, let's say. Okay, gross floor area, right? Same thing with these guys. If you're kind of bothered, with, especially with these sort of more like you know number readout, you can unclick the draw paths, unclick the draw indices. 
So this becomes a sort of very simple uh, number. If you kind of zoom in, you can actually like center these uh, however you want, change the font, etc., etc. You know, this is kind of aligning the text, etc., etc. Okay, and you can do that. You know, same with these if you want to, right? So, okay. Um, but when this kind of happens to these, right, this, you know, doesn't tell you as much of the data structure. So for these kind of things, I kind of tend to like keep or leave that sort of uh, in place. Uh, yeah, and that's actually just the sort of very simple um, explanation. Last thing we want to do is actually see what happens, for example, if I link in um, more than one of these items, right? So under the BREP, instead of setting one, I'll set multiple, one, two, three. Okay, right, and um, if I look at, again, the sort of bounding box, you'll see that these are kind of doing them, right, as individual bounding boxes, and, you know, um, this, still, this, this stuff generally will kind of still work, you know, in the series, you'll get sort of different values, right, um, because one of these is a lot shorter uh, here, right, and then it depends on like you know the relative heights of these so that sort of the longest one is over there this is this one this one corresponds to that one essentially right um these will still give you the overall kind of total area but you can link them in one by one if you want right um i change this parameter to the union box just to get like one kind of overall figure for everything if they are you know let's say if you do have kind of multiple volumes that are part of the same complex and you're adjusting these so you get one um, overall height value instead of three right um, then makes these all kind of work together uh, a bit more consistently now that being said let's say for example we have a setup like this that helps us kind of figure out our floor to floor heights and series like you know 10 11 this is all sort of saying that all our floor heights are the same, identical. But let's say we're doing a 12 foot um, interval for all the different floors. And, but then I want to kind of go in and fine tune some of these um, or vary them, like set it to 12 for like most of your floors, right? But what you can do is actually come over here, um, highlight this uh, output, right? Uh, go down, actually, let me pull it up so you can see. Go down, right, uh, copy data only right pull in a new uh, panel right click and paste like all that stuff okay this is just a text thing so you still have to highlight it right click and uh, multi change it into multi-line data right and that kind of turns it into that there's a empty value here right so just be careful that you don't want empty values you can enter that back okay so you basically kind of have this like you can kind of transfer the data over and say okay now i want to go in and you know maybe i don't want this floor right and or maybe i want this to be you know a little bit higher you can kind of adjust these numbers uh, easily and actually use this to feed back into um, the uh, sort of calculation, you'll see that it will then kind of have the setup to kind of help you do that. Okay, so sometimes if you want to do these sort of local adjustments, can be done this way, and I just generally kind of keep these side by side by side, just so if in case you want to adjust things, you can just very kind of easily transfer these um, as well. Okay, that's how that works. Okay, now uh, obviously you know still you can kind of look back at the sort of annotated one, just to kind of get a sense. I, I kind of organize these a little bit better, but that's kind of the general idea. All right.